Peace. Infinite waters diving deep once again. We're out here, we're in here. Breathing in that good ass dust, baby. Woo! Don't ask. Anger, aggression, frustration, rage. Definitely been one of the core issues of my life, which is actually the underlying reason why I got so addicted to cannabis for many years, right? Because, uh, I don't know, my whole life on the outside, I appear to be this very chill, there, nice, super friendly guy, but inside it's like I'm boiling with rage. And I've had a few, wait, hey! Just carry this, dude, not cool, man. Jabba would not be happy, even my drumstick, all my drums. <laughs> She's so innocent. She's like, did I do good, master? <laughs> Isn't she adorable? I actually want to share the very first time I got into a fist fight. You know, it made me think of this segment as a story time because I got a lot of crazy, <laughs> uh, interesting stories, let's say, from my past, which I think I should make a series of. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. And of course, if you enjoyed this, like, share, subscribe, and all of that. Um, so like I was saying, I used to be a very, very angry kid. And for, you know, I can go into it now and all the reasons why, but you guys would be here for a very long time and would probably get very bored. So let's just go to my very first high school fight because now that I'm just thinking about it, I've actually gone into a fair few fights before that and in primary school, but I'm not gonna get into that. I wouldn't get into the first time it was more of a, <laughs> let's say a mutual fight. Because there's times as a kid, like I fought friends and like certain family members. Um, and I think in primary school, and there's only been once where I got my ass absolutely handed to me, but it was like an older kid. <laughs> His name was Tom. He was not my mate. <laughs> and he bit the shit out of me. And I remember mom came and she freaked out. She's like a Spanish overprotective mother. Like, Thomas! <laughs> Anyways, so fast forward to high school. I was 13 years old. And this guy, let's call him Johnny. So Johnny was a pretty big guy. Like if I had to go from here, he would have been like there, like yay high. This was a big dude. And I was with two of my mates, Dean and Conan. And he walks up to me and then I think Conan yelled out something. Just, I don't know, just being a shit cunt. And then this guy yells back and then he, told me, like he insulted my, he said something about my mother, like, yeah, go fuck your mother, or some, some, something silly like that. And of course I responded back with, I don't even know what I said, like, I don't know, maybe you're gay, that's probably a, a common response back in those days, which I'm sure in this political climate isn't acceptable these days. So then Johnny comes over, picks up an empty plastic bottle and just, boop, on my head. Now, of course, this hurt literally 0%, but it was, for whatever reason, man, a switch just flipped in my head and I just went Hulk mode basically. It was more over the principle of him going up to me and then hitting me on the head in front of my mates. It's like, and when you're 13 and that insecure and that and all this pent up rage, eh, yeah, there was no chance I was just gonna take it and be like, ah ha ha, yeah, whatever. No, I absolutely lost my shit. And yeah, I started swinging at him. All right, so I'm punching his face. And I remember because I was so small and, and Johnny was so massive that I was literally, <laughs> literally jumping to hit his face. And then like, I remember I even tripped and <laughs> my mate Dean laughed at me. And then that was it, right? I hit him a few times and oh, got all of that energy out. And you know what, and I'm telling you guys, if you, I don't know if you guys have ever been in a fight, but there has never once in my life where I've been in a fight and I felt good afterwards. It's, it's always filled with regret and like, fuck, I'm an idiot, why did I do this? It's like, ah, it's just stupid, man. It's like, you know, you feel like a, like a primal monkey that just couldn't control your emotions, right? And it's so silly how when you're that young, you look this cool for like fighting. So stupid, and anyway, so we walked around the main courtyard of the school and then I see Johnny walking toward, like he was walking towards the office, obviously, to tell him the principal on me. And I just saw him, this blood just pouring out both nostrils, his mouth, and I was like, holy fuck, did I, did I do that, man? Because you know when you're just so blind with rage, it just, everything turns red and your memory just, like, like it's not even you, it's like, you, it's, 
it felt like I literally got possessed by a demon or something like that. Using it, and I'm not using it in a religious context, I mean more of an archetype, energetic type thing. And then my mate Conan, who was beside me, like the snickers at him, right? Because he got his ass handed to him, but like this guy half his size. But like Hank in Malcolm in the Middle says, crazy beats big every single time. <laughs> and like I said, I was always a very nice, friendly kid, and I hardly, like, I was one of those people who like rarely got into fights, but when I did, yeah, it was not good. But at the same time, putting up this facade of being like a tough guy, but really I was an oversensitive kid. And uh, yeah, usually the people who have the hardest shell have the softest insides. And yeah, that was me. So he kind of laughs at him and that's when he just went. I saw the psychoness in his eye, the same one that I gave him before I started lashing out on his face. And by that time, I got all the aggression out of me. So I was super calm and I was like, yeah, cool, I'm, I'm good. So I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna fight this guy now. So I shat myself. He just looked at me with this, oh, with such rage, man. Of course, blood everywhere. And he just got embarrassed probably by the, by the whole school by getting his ass handed to him. So I could imagine, I was like, yeah, I know that look. I'm not gonna win this fight. I'm gonna, f I'm gonna get killed here. So he just chases me around the courtyard. And luckily I was really fast. I think he kicked me once or twice. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, like a cartoon. So he's chasing me around. He almost had me by a thread, right? And I was, man, like, I'm gonna get my fucking ass kicked. So my mind just went, I'll just run to the principal's office. And I just ran past him, dodged these kicks, and then ran straight to the principal's office. I was like, oh, he's trying to kill me, he's trying to kill me. And uh, yeah, obviously I got in huge trouble. And I remember I was really upset at the, it wasn't the principal, it was like the vice principal or something. Mr. Story, I remember, it was like a big bloke, he looked like Shrek, you know. Of course I got suspended for that and I was really pissed off that he didn't get in trouble, you know, because I, you know, maybe I was just, <laughs> I just felt privileged or I'm like, he's twice my size, like are you fucking serious? But of course, it was my fault. Even though he did hit me, uh, actually I don't know. Why does it matter whose fault it is or not? I didn't have to lash out like that. But at the same time, you just don't hit someone with the with a bottle, you know, whether it hurts or not. It's like, I had a principal, man, come on. Um, and yeah, I got into huge trouble after that. And I remember I had crocodile tears. Like, I made myself cry in front of my mum because my mum was, yeah, you don't fuck with Latina women, man, especially when you get in trouble in school. Yeah, uh, she was fucking scary. Obviously, I never spoke to Johnny again. And this is something, this was someone that I got along with at the start. Like, I had a, like, he wasn't my friend, but we, you know, we had a few conversations here and there. We had a laugh. And it was just this thing so silly. And it just reminds me of just how primal humans can be and how, how much of a lack of control we have over our emotions. You know what I mean? Because I'm telling you guys, fighting is never the answer. Unless, it's, you know, unless you're defending your life or something like that. But I wasn't. I just couldn't control myself. And I wish I could tell you that that was the last fist fight that I ever went, to, I ever went in. But it was definitely not. And I think that's why in uh, ancient religions they call these things deities, right? These entities. That's why you've got the, the god of rage and war and all this kind of stuff. And it's these emotions, you know, the emotion, the energy of anger and rage, you know, the energy of envy, the energy of lust, all these kind of, they're like energies that sort of pull on humans like puppet strings. And of course I only control your life when you're unconscious, but once you shine the light, on the unconscious, right? And light, which represents knowledge, and darkness represents the unconscious, darkness. Why do you think they call it illuminate, right? Because you're shining the light of knowledge into the darkness, which represents ignorance, and then whew, you've got this new perspective, and then you can never see life the same way again, right? And that's the thing, like when you hurt another human being, you're really just hurting yourself tenfold, I believe anyway, and the karma does go back to you. There's a price for that. And that's the thing with karma and all that kind of stuff is that you can think of bad karma or sin, if you want to call it that, as salt and then good actions or good karma as water. No matter how much water you put in, that salt will always be there. But, but, if you do enough good actions, good deeds, you can fill the cup enough with water that, this, that it's so diluted that you don't even taste the salt. But it will always be there you're always going to pay a price and sometimes these things from the past come back to haunt you in some ways and I'm lucky and super grateful and blessed 
that I learnt my lesson early on in life. Uh, you know, because it could have gone much worse. And I, I remember, and the reason why, I, why I'm telling you this story is not only to be vulnerable and to share more of my story and where I come from, but also to inspire you. You know, if you are in this dark hole, if you do feel a lot of rage and frustration, you think that this is going to take control of your life forever, that's bullshit, man. It's all, it's all fucking these ego mind tricks, basically to just justify you not to change. And anger can be channeled and you can, there are so many outlets out there and that's where I discovered heavy metal, right? Because this, when I lashed out at poor old Johnny here, this was before I discovered metal and metal fucking, I would go as far to say that if it wasn't for heavy metal and I didn't get into playing music and all that kind of stuff, I would either be in jail or dead right now. But like anything in life, if you become too reliant on a certain modality, then that can become toxic in and of itself. You know what I mean? Like, I just very doubt that listening to death metal and black metal and all these dark satanic shit is going to be good for your mind. In fact, I think it's toxic for your subconscious. So you also got to be careful of which type of music you listen to, especially because of the lyrics, because words hold great power. With great power comes great responsibility. If you do struggle with a lot of anger and rage, we all do to a certain extent, of course, but uh, music really helped getting that aggression out. Um, you know, and if I could go back in time, I would have joined martial arts, maybe jujitsu or something like that, something to channel and control that anger in a positive way, you know what I mean? Or whether it's exercise or uh, writing or, you know, whether you're into writing novels or painting or drawing or making videos or whatever it may be, every single negative emotion, whether it's rage or fear or anxiety, can all be transmuted into this beautiful, amazing thing that can serve your fellow man, I guess. And it sounds super cliche and all that kind of stuff, but Human beings are designed to be in tribes, to thrive in tribes. That's how we made it this far. That's how we survived this long. And you'd be surprised how fulfilling it can be to help others, even just opening up. Like that literally is, like you, the very act of becoming vulnerable and sharing your weaknesses is serving. That's service. You don't always, you know what I mean? Like people take service too far. Like, oh, I have to go to Africa and help starving children. It's like... No, like, I mean, hey, if you feel the call to do that, awesome, do it. But don't let this angry demon consume you, man. It's just not worth it, man. It's really not worth, worth it. And i am gone quite tame, not just with this story, but like with uh, certain other events which happened later in my teenage years. And it, it gets pretty dark and I've seen some horrific shit and I have seen firsthand what happens when people let this thing consume them, you know what I mean? Even, and they're all, even if they're really sweet, awesome, nice people who are really sensitive souls at heart, but they just let this thing take control of them. And it's just, it's, yeah, it can get really, really ugly. And I'll spare the details here, because I think I've said enough. Uh, but if you'd like to know more of these kind of stories in the future, then let me know in the comment section below. But yeah, I really hope you get something out of this, guys. Um, and know that it is possible to transform this, these type of emotions to beautiful things. If I got 13-year-old Tom to see how I am today, he would think that I'm the biggest hippie pussy sensitive. <laughs> like, I don't know, man. Like, I'm telling you, how I am now compared to how I was before is crazy. And it's not even that I've changed. It's just that I've shed off these bullshit cultural programs that I put on as a mask. And that's the thing, you're not even changing. You're just connecting to who you were in the beginning. And I was always a sensitive soul my whole life. I just didn't find out until I was much older, you know? You'd be surprised, because people get identified with their, neg their negative personality traits. They get attached to their neurosis, their rage, their envy. And this, this is just who I am. No, it's not. It's not who you are. That's just a story that you've told yourself because it's what you know, but I'm telling you, it's not who you are. One last thing I'd like to say before I end this video, which has gone a bit long now, is to not beat yourself up, man. This, that's a very counterintuitive and it just kind of recreates this vicious cycle, right? Take it easy on yourself. And this is coming from someone that still to this day, I'm hard on myself and things that I've done in the past, but it's not worth it, man. Self-love, baby, it's all good. 
like I said, let me know if you enjoyed the sort of story time videos. And yeah, like, share, subscribe, click on the notification bell, you know what to do. If you want to support this channel and uh, fund future documentaries, then check out Patreon or get some merch. Have an awesome day, guys. Catch you in the next video. Peace.